You know how these days all kids want is an iPod Touch or an iPad? Well, when I was a kid, all I wanted was a Game Boy Color. Or a Furby. Or a password journal. I hope you liked my intro. It's pretty pretty cool, right? The reason I have that is because when I was a kid, I loved playing Game Boy games and I love those pixely graphics and it just reminds me of good childhood memories, I guess. The Game Boy Color was originally released in 1998, making it now 15 years old. So to celebrate, I thought I would make this mini Game Boy Color documentary. I hope you enjoy it. The Game Boy Color was immensely popular in its time. It was part of what's called the fifth generation era of computer and video games, also known as the 32-bit era, 64-bit era, or the 3D era, which spanned from approximately 1993 to 2001. The three main competing consoles at the time were the Sega Saturn, the PlayStation 1, and the Nintendo 64. During this time, the Game Boy was dominating the handheld market because of its quality, battery life, price, and library of game titles. The Game Boy and Game Boy Color combined sold 118 million units in its lifetime, and the Game Boy actually beat the Sony PlayStation 1, which sold 102 million units until it was discontinued. The original launch price of the console was $79 in the US, but from my memory it was $100 in Australia. Taking an overall look at the Game Boy, it weighed 136 grams, which is really light. It was 1.08 inches thick, 3.07 inches wide, and 5.26 inches long. The first two Game Boy Colors to be released in the US were grape and see-through purple, but later more colors were released. In fact, the Game Boy logo actually shows you the main colors that the Game Boy were available in. The official color names were Berry, Grape, Kiwi, Dandelion, and Teal. However, over the course of the Game Boy Color's life, numerous other colors were made. Most were special edition handhelds. For example, there was a yellow and blue Pokemon Game Boy, a pastel pink Game Boy with Hello Kitty on it, and a see-through orange only available for Japan. Here in Australia, we had a special green and yellow edition. As you can see here though, I have a teal and pink Game Boy with white buttons. Well, that's my own creation. This was a teal Game Boy, but I bought a pink shell and white buttons online and combined it all to become my custom bubblegum Game Boy. Changing the housing like this is actually really easy to do and I'll talk about that soon. The most exciting thing about the Game Boy Color was obviously its colored screen though. The screen resolution was 160 by 144. The original Game Boy could only display four shades of gray whereas the Game Boy Color had a 32,768 color palette, which translated to having 10, 32, or 56 colors displayed on screen at a time. It was also a smaller handheld and only required two AA batteries or a 3-volt wall charger, which could be bought separately. Battery life was excellent, and it was stated to last 10 hours, but sometimes it could even last up to 30 hours. The screen wasn't backlit, so you could only play in good lighting conditions, but I've actually modded mine to have a frontlit screen. You can find a link to the video I made about it in the description. Come on, Luigi. I'm already famous. <laughs> Luigi. Put, put I can't back. jump put ahead of him. <laughs> you have to play wait. Like and then he'll probably walk towards you or something. But then he will jump on me. Mm, no, just walk just... backwards. Don't get too close to him. Okay. You, you can chill on the step of... him. Yeah. Let's see, wait. That one there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> just chill on the step below him and then just watch him. Wait. One, it. How did I get killed then? Come on, you guys gotta. <laughs> you have to agree. Okay, I don't know what one. just happened. <laughs> that he did not touch me. <laughs> He's gone. You know he didn't. Come back. <laughs> the Game Boy Color had an amazing selection of games, and my all-time favorites included Zelda: Link's Awakening, Zelda: The Oracle of Seasons, Wario Land, Super Mario 3, and any of the Pokemon games. Here I have Super Mario Bros. Deluxe and the box, so let's take a look. This game was made for the Game Boy Color and could not be played on the original Game Boy. But the great thing about the Game Boy Color was that it had backwards compatibility, so if you had any original Game Boy games, you could still play your grayscale games that you already owned. Also, when you played an original Game Boy game on a Game Boy Color, a palette of 4 to 10 colors would be added over the game to give it a more colored effect. Pretty sweet. 
The general components inside a Game Boy cartridge can vary on the game or manufacturer, but two of the main components include a ROM chip where the game data is stored and a 3 volt battery. In cartridges that have a 3 volt battery, if the battery ever runs dry, it will need to be replaced so the game can be saved. So if you're interested in buying old Game Boy carts on eBay these days, do be aware of this issue as most of the games are over 10 years old now. However, if you have any basic ability to do soldering with a soldering iron, it's fairly easy to replace the battery inside a Game Boy cart. Just do some googling for tutorials. If we take a look around the Game Boy, on the front it has a D-pad, A and B buttons, a start and select button and one mono speaker. On the bottom of the Game Boy there's a DC power outlet and a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the top there's an infrared connectivity, on the right hand side there's a power button and you can see the cartridge slot on the back as well as the battery cover, and on the left is the volume control and a link cable connection. Speaking of the link cable, this was used for linking Game Boys together and was a popular accessory for gamers playing Pokemon, as you could trade Pokemon with friends and battle each other by linking together. But I want to show you a pretty fun device that required a link cable, and that is the Game Boy Printer. The Game Boy Printer allowed you to print out grayscale images, however it looks and works just like a receipt printer from a store and it needed 6 flippin' AA batteries to run. Some games had things you could print out for fun, but really the printer was made to be used with the Game Boy Camera. The Game Boy Camera takes 256 by 224 resolution black and white images, and the focal length of the camera is about 50 millimeters. The camera has a few different features like a self-timer, time-lapse, and mirror effects. You could even draw on your photos, add stamps to them, and choose a custom frame for your photo, and then print it out with your Game Boy printer. Listen to it go! <laughs> Fun fact, the Game Boy Camera was actually the first product to bring a camera to a Nintendo handheld until the release of the Nintendo DSi. But let's move on, I want to get into the guts of the Game Boy Color, so I'm going to open one up. To open up a Game Boy Color, you need a tri-wing screwdriver for Nintendo's special screws, but you might get away with using a flathead screwdriver if it's the right size. There are six screws that you'll need to remove to open it up. Two are hiding in the battery compartment. And here's the Game Boy Color's circuit board in all of its glory. The Game Boy Color could run at twice the speed of the original Game Boy. There were two processor modes of 4 or 8 MHz running from an 8-bit Sharp processor based on the Zilog Z80, and it had 32 kilobytes of RAM. The sound quality hadn't changed from the original Game Boy, which had four FM stereo channels, a single mono speaker, but stereo sound when using headphones. If you want to remove the board completely from the Game Boy, you'll need to unscrew three more screws, but if you plan to replace the housing of the Game Boy completely, you'll have to pry the screen from the front of the Game Boy housing or disconnect the ribbon that connects from the board to the screen. Both a little risky. I've bought a few different colored Game Boy housings which I love to mess around with. I haven't risked removing the screen yet, so I just change the back housing for fun sometimes. And this is my favorite combo so far with the Kiwi Game Boy. It is so cool. Search Game Boy housings in Google if you want to buy some, and my white Game Boy buttons were bought from kitchbent.com. It seems to be the only website that produces colored Game Boy color buttons. It's very rare. So to slowly wrap things up, the Game Boy Color is one of my favorite pieces of technology, mostly for nostalgia's sake, but even now I can still bust it out and play some excellent games. I just love this thing to bits. I actually found some drawings I did back when I was about 10 years old where I designed my own Zelda game called The Power of Time, Time Winder. And here's a Zelda drawing I did about two years ago. The Game Boy games are some of my favorites I've ever played, and they really influenced my likes and imagination. Half of the time video games fueled my love for sketching. Unfortunately that's not something I do a lot these days, though mostly it's because I'm making YouTube videos. <laughs> but it was fun to reminisce with you guys in this video and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you know anyone who would like this video or any cool blogs or websites that might feature this, I would love it if you could pass it on. Otherwise hitting the like button or leaving me some feedback in the comments would be awesome. Click the subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos. I do app reviews weekly and you're welcome to suggest any video ideas. And I'm actually thinking of doing a video about the PlayStation 1, my childhood console. Oh, and you can find my social networking links in the description. Well, I'm Ellie Awesome. Thanks for watching.